Thank you very much, President. And thanks to the rapporteur for his draft report and for the compromise amendments that he sent. I'd like to start by discussing areas where we, we can agree. And firstly, we think the issue of reduced rates for specific types of goods is, is a complex one, and we need to decide on an approach that balances the need for having a less complex system with the need to address divergent national preferences in VAT policy. In this respect, we're glad to see that the rapporteur has taken a sympathetic approach to our amendment suggesting a hybrid approach between the two opinions, the, sorry, the two options proposed by the Commission in their action plan. This hybrid approach is where goods eligible for reduced tax rates are determined at EU level, but member states are allowed a small degree of flexibility in permitting certain products to be exempted, zero rated or super reduced rated, either for reasons of equity or sustainability. We're very pleased that the rapporteur has taken this approach into his draft compromises because we believe such an approach could avoid risks and this might actually facilitate agreement between countries in the Council. I'd like to mention in passing that this has a, a strong gender dimension in our country where there's a, a strong campaign for um, tampons and other sanitary products to be exempted from VAT. I think that's a European-wide campaign now. And while that's a symbolic issue, it does draw attention to the gender dimension of tax. And we had a very successful conference on that issue recently here in the Parliament. So other amendments we've tabled go in the direction of supporting the Commission in its idea of establishing a definitive single EUT VAT system based on the destination principle. In this respect, we strongly disagree with the decision of the rapporteur to favour a reverse charge system. We think that it will be a big mistake for this House to support an approach advocated by just one or two member states in the Council, and it should be noted that this approach has already been discarded by the Commission in the past based on a careful assessment of its implications. They are as follows. First, it would substantially change the principle on which domestic VAT is based, namely fractionated payments. We would end up having two very different VAT systems for domestic transactions and cross-border transactions. Such a thing would not be beneficial for the development of the internal market, we believe. In addition, studies drew attention to the fact that this system will generate different types of fraud at the retail level. And finally, it is also unclear whether the reverse charge system will imply reduced administrative costs for SMEs. And on, the on this last point, Greens argued for a specific exemption for micro-businesses that are so small that the administrative cost of using the one-stop shop causes them to either stop trading with other EU countries or stop trading altogether. And we would stress the importance of that to other shadows in a world where we need to be supporting our SMEs across the continent. Thank you.